Leadership. 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 How do you define leadership? I think it is the ability to see what the problem is, to identify it. And then it is the ability to find solutions. And it is also the ability to have a vision for the future, for the long term that can guide you as you make decisions along the way. And I think psychology has a lot to do with all three of these things because identifying the problem has to do with learning what is the most anxiety provoking for people. I mean, there are a lot of problems, of course, in society. The, the thing is to identify what rises to the top at that moment in time. And then there is the need to figure out the solution. And that involves psychology because you have to assess what is actually possible, what people will be able to tolerate in terms of change for the better. Leadership is about service. It is about showing up with vision and then being able to not work people to do the vision, but to actually engage in the work of bringing the vision to manifestation in a way that is motivational, that is inspiring, that is, as you named, transformational. Uh, for me, simply maintaining the status quo is not really leadership, that's maintenance. Uh, and so to be a leader, we have to be willing to do the work. A leader is very tuned into identity, privilege, power, oppression, marginalization, and has the courage to speak up about those things and to be willing to uh, dismantle them, uh, to call them out and to work uh, to make things better. It's really about serving a community, serving an organization. It's a desire to make things better. It's a desire to do right by people, right? And so that notion of caring and service are intimately entwined for me in, in leadership. And I think for many people of color, that's been a profound root for them. People, it's not just an abstract position. It's not a, a square on an org chart. It's about the connections you make to the people, for the people, with the people that I think gives me a lot of joy. Um, the, the other thing that really has popped into my mind about this, and I think for me, this is the most joyous part about leadership, is creating. That's it, flat out. You know, a big part of psychology, a big part of leadership, right, is helping to bring about change, right? You're not there to just stand there and, you know, hold the flag, right? You're there to move the flag. You're there to push that boundary a little bit, to make it a little bit better. And that, and that creation, that's where the joy is. Whether it's making things, whether it's people, the policies, the systems, making those even just a little bit better for even just a little bit amount of time. You know, a, a very simple definition I would give you is that leadership is about helping others learn, grow, and change. And that then you have to put a context around it. So helping people learn, grow, and change in public policy looks different than helping people learn, grow, and change in therapy. That may look different than people helping people learn, grow, and change as a police officer. You know, it, 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 that's the context though. And um, I'm particularly encouraged by that definition because it's really a it's really a definition that fits in a psychological context because learning and growth and change are really all psychological concepts so I, I i ground my understanding of leadership and developing leaders in that uh, are what i believe are many of our psychological underpinnings as a psychologist, I think personality type really does um, uh, influence the types of leaders that people are. Um, I think, for example, folks who are more extroverted um, can be what we stereotypically think of leaders as folks who are able to command an audience, get people to, to do things, to follow their lead, um, inspire people, motivate people, and so forth. And I think that's definitely one type of leader that's out there. Um, and so um, for me, a leader is somebody who has passion 
mission and drive and who um, has the the motivation to um, get other people to to do something and especially something that might um, push them towards uh, a more equitable and just society in some way and a leader in order to do that oftentimes has to be someone who leads by example and is able to to walk the walk talk the talk able to um, you know really demonstrate that whatever it is they're asking people to do that that they're able to do that as well leadership is the process of influencing the activities of an individual or group towards goal achievement in a given situation and i think that the reason that that definition sort of resonates with me is because it speaks of the importance of working with others leadership cannot take place if you are by yourself right so leadership has to take place in the context but it also is not authoritarian it's inspiring others to action to complete the required task that you need to do at that particular particular moment in time this definition also allows you to recognize that leaders can be leaders without any formal title so in many critical situations i think leaders are not those who hold the title of authority but those who can marshal others to act and accomplish the goals of the moment when I hear the word leadership, I think about a hierarchical structure in which somebody makes the rules and other people follow those rules. But actually, my career and the career of many of my associates is defined more by relationships. So the extent to which we can create welcoming relationships for people and by a means of those relationships provide opportunities for them and also encourage them not to become involved in the hierarchical systems where power becomes the primary goal as opposed to uh, relationship-oriented leadership, if we use that word, where the goal is essentially family, community, recognizing the common needs and purposes of all of us. I don't believe that leaders have to hold the highest ranks in an organization, but good leaders are known for their beliefs, their work ethic, their passion, and then their capacity to pass that enthusiasm on to clients or colleagues to make change. Characteristics, you have to have some intellectual prowess, some intellectual gifts, some capacity to see bigger things than what they are, than how they're presented to you. You have to have a strong work ethic. You have to act like it's impossible to fail. And I argue that probably the most important characteristic of good leadership is good character. People who not only try to make things right, but they know right and then are compelled to do right. Leadership is about service. It is about uh, collaboration and consensus building. Uh, that is not a dictatorship. And so really a responsible use of power, right? That it is not, you know, I get to be in, in charge of the crayon, so now everyone must do what I say, but believing that there's wisdom in the room and that we rise more when we tap into all of the wisdom that's present. I read by building peace of diverse values representing different viewpoints doing my homework and most importantly, you have to listen and be open to identifying what is the issue and how to we examine the issue from up in order to identify effective solutions. I think that when you listen, 
you're basically taking in all the details and getting as much information as possible. Yeah. And then you can start formulating things and ideas better if you just listen instead of just talking all the time. Yeah. So one of the things that I really uh, try to spend my time doing is listening mm -hmm. so I can really understand the issues and see what people's viewpoints are. What works? What are some of the barriers and the challenges? And then that can help us in terms of what the next steps could be. That could possibly be more successful. My goal has always been as a leader to bring all voices to the table. Uh, not to exclude those that have, were at the table before, but to make the table bigger, <laughs> or to make room at the table for others to come um, who have not been there previously. Our backgrounds include a lot of strengths and we have to remember that we have unique strengths that come from having lived in our cultures, our respective, um, you know, experiences, and and that those uh, provide us with advantages, and so that we can pull on those and use those. Leadership is leading by example, being the kind of person that you want to be and that you want others to be. I'm not religious at all. My parents were atheists. They discouraged religion of any kind, but they were still ethnically Jewish and everybody I knew was Jewish. And I did learn about tikkun olam, which is change the world, make the world a better place. And the way that I use that every day in my life is I try to do little things that I can do every day that are good. Uh, culturally, we have a saying, keep it real. Uh, and it's so important in spaces uh, to show up as my full self, uh, not diluted or censored or watered down. Because when we do anything less, we're simply becoming a token. And I am committed to not being a token, meaning not just being a face for people to put on a brochure or on a website or to be able to put on their graph that blip they had one or they had this many, but to be present. And so to be present at the table means the table has to shift.